Up and down the Northeast, as the holiday weekend winds down, the heat wave of 2010 picks up. I'm evaporating. Yeah, I'm melting. From Washington. It is hot, and it's going to get hotter. I don't think that anyone disagrees with the fact that we actually are in the middle of a cold period that started about nine years ago. We've had nine years of a global cooling trend since the 1st of January 2001. Weather experts are calling it the hottest summer in recorded history. Temperatures soaring above 30 Celsius have hit Europe, central and eastern parts of the U.S. and western Asia. And this is, this is not anecdotal. This, the scientific temperature research surveys, we are actually cooling. It's not just Greece that's being affected by this heat wave. Temperatures in other parts of Europe are topping 40 degrees Celsius. In Russia, they're experiencing their worst drought in a century. 25 million acres of crops have been ruined. Dennis Avery of the Hudson Institute joins those predicting the next 20 to 30 years will actually bring cooler temperatures. The Earth's temperatures have dropped an average of six-tenths of a degree Celsius in the last two years. Numbers don't lie, and they add up to the warmest spring planet Earth has ever recorded. And as Mike Drolet reports, it follows what were the hottest winter months, too. That it's hot in mid-July isn't much of a surprise. That it got so hot so early in the year is. In fact, last month was the hottest June ever recorded worldwide, 16.2 degrees, almost a degree hotter than normal. And June wasn't an anomaly. The year-to-date temperature of 14.2 degrees is a record, putting 2010 on pace to becoming the hottest year ever. The evidence is overwhelming. Around the world where it's normally cool, it's now hot, scorching hot. Europe, from Hungary to Austria, Italy and Russia, is experiencing a terrible heat wave. In the looking glass world of climate deniers, down is up, black is white, and hot is cold. The global temperatures uh, by NOAA uh, are seven of the eight warmest years on record have occurred since 2001. The ten warmest years have all occurred since 1995. So uh, let me let me start, uh, if I may, uh, uh, Joseph DeLeo, uh, your reaction to those numbers, do you, do you quibble with uh, what they represent? Yes, I do. In fact, uh, if you look at the satellite data, which is the most reliable data, the best coverage of the globe, for climate deniers, satellite temperatures are considered the holy grail, not subject to the manipulation of evil scientists who ignore the effects of urbanization and are all in on a sinister global conspiracy. And Lou, you know, your people in, in, this, in your uh, studio know that uh, if they live in the suburbs of New York City, it's a lot colder in rural areas than it is in the city. So now we have more urban uh, effect in, in those uh, numbers. Uh, reflecting uh, that show up in that that enhanced or uh, exaggerated warming right. in the global data set. Satellites are fantastic tools, and a fleet of Earth observation satellites give us a richly detailed view of planetary processes. But they're only as good as the men that manage them. The late Stephen Schneider explained in a recent lecture. We've had surface thermometers which for 150 years have shown what IPCC has called an unequivocal warming trend. And it was challenged for 20 years by people using satellite measurements of the radiance of microwaves from oxygen atoms. And that was supposed to give you a global picture that eliminated some of the thermometer problems like cities warming up and that, you know, pollutes the record. And now this this, this is the important one. This is what gives us temperature. This is a microwave sounding unit, which kind of acts like a microwave oven bit in reverse. Instead of emitting microwaves, it receives and records microwaves. And depending on the amount of microwave radiation it receives, that gives us an idea about temperature. So, oh, let's use the satellite. That gives you the bird's eye picture. The problem is that these microwaves are emitted not just from the, from from the oxygen atoms as in proportion to their temperature, but from the surface, from thick clouds at different elevations. It's a heroic effort to build a model to reconstruct how to interpret that satellite measured stuff. 
There is no satellite thermometer. There's a satellite model. One of the most important satellite databases is managed at the University of Alabama at Huntsville, or UAH. A key leader in the UAH team is Dr. John Christie. Dr. Christie is one of a tiny percentage of working climate scientists who does not believe climate change is a serious problem. I am writing the American Meteorological Society's report on upper air temperatures. I have seven data sets in there. Turns out they're all very, very close together. So the planet is warming about 0.14 degrees C per decade right now. Okay. Dr. Christie's colleague is Dr. Roy Spencer. Formerly of NASA, Dr. Spencer is now a senior researcher at UAH and has found another higher calling as well. I got a note today from our official climatologist, Dr. Roy Spencer. He sent me something from his blog. In a recent interview, Dr. Spencer recalled the series of errors that led him to be, at one time, a major proponent of the global cooling canard. I think when we made that correction, I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think we went from a, a cooling trend to a slight warming trend. And then ever since then, it's been a warming trend. Um, actually by sort of ever-increasing amounts. Dr. Spencer's blog provides a very useful portal to the most recent satellite readings, which do not support the idea of global cooling. Several recent months have been the warmest in the satellite record, and the overall upward trend is easily discernible, even to the untrained eye. Climate is not weather, and trends are measured not in months or years, but decades. In every major temperature database, each of the last three decades has been warmer than the one preceding. Climate deniers like to cherry-pick a short period in a longer record to make their claims, while ignoring the obvious long-term profile. In the NASA graph for the last 20 years, 2005 is the hottest year with 1998, 2007, and 2009 tied for close second. Climate deniers chronically point out that 1998 was warmer than this or that year, in an attempt to obscure the overall trend. One of the key cyclical processes for global temperature is the Pacific warming oscillation known as El Nino, and its opposite number, the cooling La Nina. In our graph, we can factor in the warming push that El Nino gives, and the dampening effect in the La Nina years. 1998 was boosted by an enormous El Nino event, and the record reflects warmings in each subsequent El Nino year, including 2010. Likewise, La Nina events show up in years that are cooler, but still part of the overall warming trend. You may be wondering what happened in the early 90s, when a sizable El Nino coincided with a temporary cool spell. 1991 saw the largest volcanic eruption since 1912, Mount Pinatubo, which ejected enough reflecting particles into the atmosphere to cool the planet for several years. There's another force that deniers say climate scientists deliberately ignore. To hear more about that, click below to go to part two of this special heat wave edition of Climate Denial Crock of the Week.